Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts and today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing an experiment to see what is the best thing that you can use to easily get drips off the back of something when you do a pour. Now I'm going to do four coaster pours and I'm going to just do some colourful pours on these and then I'm going to let them cure up, cut something out on my Cricut, put that on there and then do a flood coat. So I've got quite a lot of resin going over them. I am going to be using a heat resistant resin from Resin Colour as well so that if they do work out really well that I can actually use them as coasters. And the four things I'm going to be testing to put on the back of these are masking tape or painter's tape, normal tape or clear tape, latex and PVA or white glue, so things like Elmer's glue or school glue, and see which one works the best or if they all work the same. So an experiment to see how that is going to go. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of future videos. And ring my bell. Ring my bell. Oh, ring my bell. So that way you'll get notifications when I've got a new video coming out. Before I go ahead and try all the different things that I'm going to put on the backs of these coasters to see about the drip, I'm going to paint them with some iridescent paint because I've been inspired by Sharon Vividay to do a little bit more pouring. So I'm going to do some pours on these. Thank you, Sharon. She is lovely. Check out her channel. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And they're dedicated to her, hopefully, if they come out right. If they don't come out right, then I won't dedicate them to Sharon. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to... I want these to be quite bright and sunny kind of colours when I pour on them before I put my Cricut vinyl on them. So what I'm going to use is a dreamy lemon yellow. Ooh. Now this isn't necessarily going to show through the top but it is going to be hopefully visible on the bottom but it will also seal up these little plywood coaster blanks that I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this on and then I'll come back when I'm ready to pour on them. So I'm ready now. These are all dried up. I've painted them both sides and the first one I'm going to do is with some just painter's tape. And I think this one's going to be fairly easy to do. I'm just going to pop the painter's tape on the back of them like this and then trim it off. Now I want to make sure that that's down quite well and stuck down so I'm just going to burnish it over with my hands And make sure I get all those edges so that the resin isn't likely to leak under the edges. And then I'm just going to trim it off. And I shall do the same with the cellar tape as well. Or the sticky, clear sticky tape. So that seems to have got quite a nice, neat circle and edge. I'll go over it one more time with my finger to ensure that those edges are down. And then we'll put that to one side. I'll do the same, exactly the same method with the clear packing tape or sticky tape. Now I do have concerns that when I take this tape off that it's going to pull the paint off. But that isn't a major issue because I can always touch that up. So that one's nicely burnished. The other one I'm going to do is with the PVA glue. And um, PVA glue is just a white glue. It's a wood glue or a school glue or an Elmer's glue. I'm just going to paint that on. Now I might do two coats of this to make it easier to peel off once it's dry. Now this is going to take a while to dry. It's probably going to take a couple of hours to dry. But I'm going to go over it with my heat gun and try and dry it a little bit quicker. And then I'll put another coat on. I might even put two more coats on so it's a nice and thick coat. For me to be able to peel off afterwards and the other one i'm going to be using is this latex the same with the latex and do two coats to ensure that it's nicely on there and it's not too thin to pour off and this again will take a bit of time to dry up and i am going to put it on fairly thick to ensure that it is easier i will go ahead and do the extra coats on those once they're dry and then i'll come back and i'll start the pour so I'm using the custom art resin here because it's a nice thick resin and it's ideal and I've decanted it into some smaller pots because it is quite warm in my shed and I don't want it to set up really quick. 
And what I'm doing is I'm just pouring on my colours, as you can see here, and letting them drip down. Now I am pouring on quite a lot because I do want to create quite a lot of drips with this because of the test that we're actually doing. So I'm just scraping out the remains because I do not like waste and putting that on and going in with the dark blue now at the bottom and one of these it does actually run off so it means I didn't actually have the coaster as level as it should be. Squidgly widgly and a bit of the black through. I'd just like to say a quick thank you to all my members without which I would not be able to continue this channel. I hope you're loving and enjoying all the new perks and all the bits and pieces that are going on behind the scenes in the members area. So I'm going through it with my heat gun just to move it around a little bit. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee and help me save towards my 3D printer and get your name on next month's board, the link to that is in the description below. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. So I've gone over it now with my heat gun. I'm just pouring any resin out now that was left over onto the mat. And I'll explain why I do that later. Popping my torch over it to pop any of the laugh bubbles that are there covering it up to make sure no dust, flies or hairs and things get on it and let it cure for 24 hours. Well these have cured now and I'm ready to put my dragons on that I've cut out of vinyl in different colours and if you'd like to know how I do these then I'll link the video to my other channel where I do all these different sorts of crafts at the end of this video. I love how these have come out, I think they re look really really nice and they have all created because I made sure that I put a lot of the resin on to ensure that I got drips so they've made a lot of drips and as a result there's quite a lot of runoff as well. Now I'm not going to chuck this runoff away because I think it's really really pretty and I will use it in in some upcoming projects because there's no point in disposing of it and it'll just come off the silicon mat really easily and it'll look great in some projects. So all I need now to do is to put my little dragons on and they should go on fairly easily. Oh, I just need to pull them off of this and make a decision on where I want to put them. I think I'm gonna have the red towards the top Put them on kind of as centrally as possible. Rub them down with my finger. And then take off this tape. And then what I will do is I will do another layer of heat resistant resin on top of this to protect them and I will be using the resin colour heat resistant resin because it's really good and very good at heat being heat resistant and easy to apply and that way it will protect the little dragon transfer and it will also protect the colour underneath from damage from any heat. So that's all the dragons put onto the coasters. I love how they've come out especially that gold one I mean that's looking good. So these are all ready, I've got my heat resistant resin mixed up and I want to make sure that I give a good pour on these. I mean, it's not that I'm doming them because I want to kind of flood coat them and that way I will also get some resin on the other side. So I pour some in the middle, spread it over with just a normal stick as much as I need to. If I need to add some more resin to it like I did there, then I will just add some more resin to it. Pop any bubbles that may have come up through using the stick and different things cover it up leave it for about 24 hours to fully cure before i come back but these are all nice and cured now and i really do love how they've come out <laughs> i think they're great and um, i like the pattern on the back and i also like the way that the little vinyl stickers come out i'd love to know what you thought of these in in the comments as well so first we've got the latex this is the latex and the latex is not going to come off here it's absolutely adhered to this wood even though i painted it first so that is definitely a bust and there is no way that these little sticks of resin are going to come off there actually as you can see it's just pulling the wood apart and i really don't want that to happen so what i'm going to use is i will just use a sharp knife and i will heat the knife up and then i will cut them through so i'll just show you quickly how i do that so i just heat the knife up make sure you do this in a well ventilated area as well 
And then once the knife's nice and hot, it'll just slide through there. But it will leave a little bit of a mark on there, where it's come off. But actually, what I do like about this latex is it certainly has put a waterproof base onto this coaster. And I might use it afterwards to coat them off. So the next one I'm going to try is the PVA glue. And to be perfectly honest, this is exactly the same. So this one's another bust. And I would suggest that the only way that this is going to come off is by cutting them off. And so again, PVA glue and latex, definitely a bust. Now I'm not saying they won't work on something else. Maybe if you wanted to coat some resin in resin and you put painted it on the resin, it might come off. But that wasn't the test that I was doing. So the next one is the masking tape or the painter's tape. Now, normally I find painter's tape is not too bad to get off. And yeah, that's just coming off nicely with the painter's tape. It is taking a bit of the paint off the bottom, but we don't mind about that because what we can do is we can just give that another quick coat and the painter's tape comes off quite easily and they will all come off. Now this is the cellar tape or the clear plastic tape. And again, I'm just going to pop my knife under that. And this one, these bits should just pick straight off it because we use sellotape as a way of blocking things up sometimes with resin. So I think to me, the easiest one so far is this clear sellotape and it was really easy to put on. It's also not lifting off so far any of the paint. But look how easy they are just popping off and leaving. Look, that was so easy. So for me, the winner is definitely the tape and tape on the background and use the coasters. Now, I love these coasters and as I said, they were made with a heat resistant resin. But a word of warning, if you've made these with heat resistant resin, leave them for at least two weeks before you use them with anything that's hot cup of tea or anything like that. Because it takes that long for the resin to completely, absolutely go hard and then you won't get any marks in it. So let me know in the comments below which one, which method you use for backing. And I'm going to clean all these up now, put them to one side, not stacked on top of each other either. Let them finish curing up for a couple of weeks and then I'm going to use them. And I really do like them. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. I would definitely go for this sort of tape on the back of painted wood. And to be honest, on many, many things I would use this, but on wood, Definitely. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and ring that notification bell so you get notified whenever my videos come out. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, then the link to that is in the description below along with the link to become a member. Don't forget to check out the video that's coming up next. I'll link a playlist on how to make lots of different types of coasters. Enjoy your resin. Take care. Bye.